What are you doing, Randy? What are you, what are you uh, doing, Randy? I make a donut. Make a donut? Do it, make a donut. Do it, make a donut. donut. Do it, donut. Yeah. I got fired. Hey, this is Kevin. I got fired. I drank beer early. Sat smoke out of my face. Hey, buddy. What is that? Oh, get that out of here. Come on, get out of here. Hey Sam, can we come in? Uh, you're interrupting a meeting, but yeah, come on in. Uh, listen, kids, the performance last week was unacceptable. I don't care that the waves were big. I don't care. That's not, those aren't excuses. And now this week it's a right-handed course, so that's going to be an excuse. I don't want excuses. You have to be faster. I got your lap times from last week. If you're not faster this week, we're going to revisit your contracts. All right? Go out there and get them. Thanks. Welcome to Hart County. Nestled in Northeast Georgia on beautiful Lake Hartwell, Hart County and Hartwell are less than a two hour drive from both Metro Atlanta and Greenville Spartanburg. We offer something for everyone. Whether you prefer relaxing on the shoreline or enjoying water sports, Lake Hartwell provides plenty of opportunities to live well and play well. Several recreation areas are located just minutes from downtown Hartwell with sandy beaches, boat launches, playgrounds, and picnic shelters. Walkers and runners can take in views of the lake on the trails located at Big Oaks Recreation Area off US Highway 29. Avid sports fishermen and weekend anglers will enjoy spending time on Lake Hartwell. Fish species range from bass to brim and crappie to catfish. The fishing pier just below the Hartwell Dam is a popular place to cast a line. Gumbrench Park is a mega ramp facility for fishing tournaments and outdoor events. Several local marinas offer comprehensive boating services. Cyclists will enjoy the scenic back roads in Hart County. Memorial Day weekend features Challenge of the Centuries, a two-day event with scenic routes and a ride over the top of Hartwell Lake Dam. Golfers can enjoy tea times at either Hartwell or Katichi Golf Clubs. Both courses are open to the public. Katichi Golf Club and Conference Center is a 380-acre PAR 72 Audubon certified course ranked by Golf Digest as a four-star destination. Downtown Hartwell, a certified Main Street community, offers a variety of quaint shops and restaurants. Have a bite to eat or shop for antiques, art, jewelry, and clothing. Festivals and downtown events occur throughout the year and offer seasonal fun for all ages. Hartwell has a vibrant arts community with lots of opportunities for creativity. Downtown Hartwell is home to the Hart Regional Arts Council, as well as galleries and art studios. The Hart County Community Theater and Savannah River Productions stage a variety of plays throughout the year. Bluegrass Express offers foot-tapping bluegrass every Saturday night. Visit the Hart County Museum and the historic Teasley Holland House to discover our rich past. Pick up a downtown walking tour brochure and stroll through Hartwell's history while enjoying our shops and Oak Line streets. Experience our friendliness and warm hospitality. Live well, play well, Hartwell.
Broward Motorsports, South Florida's premier power sports dealer. With four locations, Davie, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, and Tecesta. A huge selection of new and used motorcycles, UTVs, ATVs, boats, trailers, and personal watercraft. Log on, check out the selection, and request a quote. Broward Motorsports will not be undersold. The best staff in the industry are ready to serve you. We also feature a customizing department to build the machine of your dreams. At Broward Motorsports, you gotta ride. generations, Yamaha has dominated the racing circuit across the world. Winning is our passion, speed is our tradition, and racing is built into Yamaha's DNA. In fact, when it comes to the top pros in racing, Yamaha is consistently their number one choice. So, are you ready to race like a pro? With the 2018 Performance Race Series of Wave Runners, Yamaha continues their long-standing tradition of crafting top-of-the-line Wave Runners capable of blowing everyone else out of the water. Yamaha has become the only choice for serious racers and aspiring speedsters. For next-level thrills on the closed course, the Super Jet offers an incredible incredibly nimble mix of speed and control with a lightweight frame and responsive handling. This best-selling stand-up watercraft has beat out the competition time and time again. Your weekend goes by fast when you're on a VXR. This Speed Demon offers sleek style with a seat specifically designed for racing. An ultralight Nano XL pollen deck, the revolutionary ride handlebar system, and the speed of the 1.8 liter high output Yamaha Marine engine. The GP1800 is race ready, right out of the box and a proven winner on and off the course. It's our most powerful wave runner with the supercharged Super Vortex high output Yamaha Marine engine, including a 160 millimeter high pressure eight vane pump and the ultra lightweight Nano XL2 hull and deck provide an optimal power to weight ratio. With a newly redesigned seat for maximum comfort and a state-of-the-art ride system, you'll feel practically glued to the water. No one else even comes close to challenging it. 
If you're ready to be part of an elite club of race-winning pros, it's time for you to join the Yamaha racing tradition with the closed course conquering Superjet, VXR, and the GP1800, you'll enjoy endless victories on the water. A little bit in the sports talk. Listen to this. Uh, first overall, we've got a one, two, three-way tie on points for first overall. Devin Farthing, five points total. Taylor Skellett, five points total. Wyatt Hayes, five points total. This is the third and most crucial moto. Well, the other thing is in the point standings, you know, we're heading into the finals next weekend, but it's uh, Wyatt Hayes in the lead with points. And Hayden Skellett not here this weekend, apparently. He's not no, racing. Is he here. racing? Yeah, sure. He, oh, he's not in this class, no, though. No, no, no. Even though he he's in up. second place in this class. Uh, but Taylor Skellett, his sister, is in third place overall. She's going to be in second place in points behind Wyatt Hayes uh, going into the finals, it looks like, next double weekend. Double points round next points. weekend. Taylor's, Anybody's race. Taylor Skellis got a shot at the national championship. No question about it. As does Wyatt Hayes. He's the leader right now. But good, beating Wyatt Hayes is going to be very difficult. This is a, a very, very fast young man. So, boat number one down in the starting line making his return to racing is Devin Farthing. And welcome to Lake Hartwell, Georgia. I'm Kurt Nolenberg. This is Rick Lake. To all the, uh, those of you out on the World Wide Web, We've been having some great races already this morning. We've got a lot more races to go. Rick, that sports stock class was phenomenal. Amazing. Check it out later. Boy, no question about it. We're sorry you missed that one because it was one of the races, that one of the top races we've seen in a while. But we're getting ready to go down to the starting line. We've got the amateur ski stock class on the line, and this has been a good race all weekend long. This is their third and final moto we're going into, and we're looking for a big battle here between um, – Devin Farthing and uh, Taylor Skellett and Wyatt Hayes, Jeb Zarzauer. We got some top riders on the line right now ready to go at it uh, to see who takes the overall here today in, in uh, Hartwell. No question about it. It was a, as we scan down the line, we've got some fast riders on that number one boat out of Ackworth, Georgia, Devin Farthing. Number 16 out of Huntersville, North Carolina, Travis Clark. On the number 20, Kawasaki out of Mount Holly, North Carolina, Sammy Price. Number 85 out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, Dustin Higdon. On the 115, Yamaha out of High Point, North Carolina, Connor Richuk. 127 out of Chapin, South Carolina, Patrick Steer. On the 295 out of Port Charlotte, Florida, Taylor Skellett. Number 425 out of Dawsonville, Georgia. Wyatt Hayes, our points leader. On the 702 out of Raleigh, North Carolina, Jeb Zarzauer. And 712 out of Cornelius, North Carolina on the Cowie, Nikki Turner. All right, amateur ski stock. This is going to be an exciting race, and the points couldn't be tighter with a three-way tie for first headed into this third and final moto. Yeah, tied, uh, tied up here, very tight in uh, points for today's racing for the overall today here in Hartsville round number four and then of course next weekend we go to round number five the final the national championships in um, Charleston West Virginia and in this particular class it is Wyatt Hayes with a points lead but a relatively slender points lead over both Taylor Skellett and Jeb Zarzauer Hayden Skellett is in second overall but he has moved out of this class up into a different class and so uh, we're going to see Taylor Skell, Je Zeb, Jeb Zarzauer. Um, they're all contending for the overall championship. And as you mentioned, next weekend is going to be a double points battle. So um, these national championships are on the line. Yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be exciting next weekend. But boy, we got a lot more exciting racing going on today. As we look down the line, we're about ready to start amateur ski stock, the third and most gruesome moto. You love that. I love that, and it's so true. Well, you're kind of a gruesome guy. Yeah. That's not nice. <laughs> I say that with, lo with total love and respect. You're, you're going to have to say that a few more times for me to believe you. You're, you're, <laughs> dude, you're a former road racer. <laughs> right. You know, you're gnarly. <laughs> you guys, you know, I, I motocross. You know, we go like, you know, 45 miles an hour, maybe 50 once in a while, maybe 60 on a big track. You're going like, what, 150 out there, dude. Yeah, back then, that's about all of all the 
all the machines would do. Well, Honestly, these days, 200 or whatever, or 180 or whatever yeah, they're doing, but whatever. Who, but who, who cares? Machine, 180 miles an hour. Yeah. Road racing, that's, that's, that's a whole other world. You it get it. You were a pro. And, a lot uh, of fun. And uh, that's why I say you're gnarly. Yeah. Okay. And you got the body to prove it. Boy, you got that right. <laughs> I got the scars to prove it. Exactly right. Well, well earned. You know, chick, you know, chicks dig scars. I will tell you what, after 40 years, they, a lot of them, they dissipate. Chicks dig scars. What can I tell you? The physical scars, the metal scars, as you well know, are still there. Deep rooted. Here we go. Amateur ski stock. Wyatt Hayes on the pole on the inside. Jeb Zarza are on the pole on the outside. These two have had some battles right there. Taylor Skellett looking strong. And Skellett gets the drive off oh, the Devin, outside. Devin Farthing with the jump, and Devin kind of goes the wrong way, R corrects, and into the lead. Or Zarzauer, is that uh, Wyatt Hayes inside That's of Wyatt him? Hayes on the inside. Oh. Taylor Skellett on the outside with Zarzauer right behind Skellett. Devin Farthing in his return to racing got a great hole shot out of the gate, but kind of veered toward the outside of the start and uh, mid-course corrected to the inside. And Wyatt Hayes able to take advantage as Wyatt Hayes goes into the lead down the front straightaway. 425, the race leader. Devin Farthing right behind him, boat number one. Here comes Taylor and Skellett. And Taylor Skellett. Keep an eye on 12-year-old young Taylor Skellett. This young lady is a hard charger, and she is going to put the pressure on Devin Farthing here for second place. But right now, it's Wyatt Hayes with some beautiful, clean water here on Lake Hartwell. Yeah, there's no question why Wyatt Hayes is the points leader. When he gets out front, it is very difficult to get by him. He rides a clean uh, race, good lines, staying over, uh, centered over the machine, and uh, he's got the the strength to, to battle all the way through a moto. Yeah, no question about it. He he is a stud, and um, and definitely, this is our first flat water race of the year, really. I mean, Racine yeah. wasn't real bad, but it was Lake Michigan. A lot of holes out there in that track in Racine. This one, this is really a, a true flat water, real fast race. This is high-speed horsepower alley right here. And who's got it, who doesn't, and who can hang on for an entire moto? Well, line selection and... Uh Pilot error, those are the things that are gonna gonna take you out. Oh, and Zeb Zarzauer putting his head back. I don't know what's going on right there. Well, he moved up into third position. I know, past he, Taylor took the outside. He was she making some weird body the gestures inside. there. Put his head back and maybe he's trying to get a breath of fresh air down the front straightaway. I don't know what's going on, but uh, nonetheless, it's Wyatt Hayes leading this thing out in front. He's got some nice water on that jet trim back straightaway. Uh, Devin Farthy looking really strong in his return to racing. First time we've seen him since last year. No question. If you watch Hayes, too, he was stretching his back out. He knows he's got the lead. He's, you know, he's, he's been doing this a while. He knows when to back off and when to hammer it. Well, he's 17 years old, and uh, he's at 17, the these guys rarely let off. They're our full throttle, as is Skelet, Devin Farthing, Jeb Zarzauer. I, I mean, like this. Watch this, Rick. Sorry to interrupt, but watch Devin Farthing taking the inside. Wyatt Hayes took the outside. Skellett took the inside. And look at this. Devin Farthing looks over. Here comes Zarzauer at speed off the outside. Well, Zarzauer had a really good second moto yesterday. A bad first moto had a ninth. In the second moto, he took the win convincingly. And uh, so that first moto is really throwing him off the overall for the weekend because he is charging right up behind Devin Farthing right now, and he may very well take second place before this is over. Well, I'll tell you what, Devin Farthing, he's, he's, they, he has not made an error in this. Look at him get down. Yeah. I mean, he, on that back straightaway, he's, he's got great power to weight and he's got aerodynamics. And rider position for his weight. He's in the perfect spot he's on that flying. ski. You can see the ski. Totally level. It's not nose up. It's not well, he nose keeps heavy. It, he keeps it in a perfect plane. You're absolutely right. Zarzauer, though, goes to the inside. He's an animal. Yep, and uh, Devin goes outside. Let's see where they come out onto the front straightaway. It's going to be Hayes again, our race leader, down the front straight with the leader. Here comes Zarzauer. Zarzauer makes the pass on Devin Farthing. And Farthing, is he going to let him get away with it? Farthing charging up on the outside. But Zarzauer is going to make it stick and take over second. I had a feeling that was coming. Yeah, Skellett right there in fourth, sorry. But Zarzauer now setting his sights on Wyatt Hayes. Oh, yeah. Now, Zarzauer and Hayes, those two have been battling all year long. 
And I'll tell you what, Jeb Zarzauer, maybe more than any other rider this year, has been on or off. Like, he is at the front of the yeah. pack or he's back in the pack because he tried so hard, he hit the eject button. He's That's what happened in moto number one. If you remember, yep. he got off twice in that first moto and still made his way up to ninth. Same thing uh, two weekends ago in Racine at round three. He was yep. up and down the entire, entire weekend. Yep. So he, once he gets a little more consistency, he is going to be uh, one of the top. He already is a top rider, but yep. he'll even be better. Where's uh, Zarzauer in the overall points? Zarzauer is right uh, just in fourth place. He's he's a contender, but he's going to have to move up. You see, he's got, he's he's hurt by that eighth place finish in Moto Number One. Yeah, and that's a little too far back with only the one more. Yeah. However, but with double points next yeah. weekend, he's still a threat because yeah, he's got the know. speed. Yeah, there, there no question he can run up front. All top four riders. All of these four riders could be at the front and have been. I have a feeling the points battle is going to come down to a real tight finish in uh, uh, West Virginia next weekend. Oh, no question, especially in, well, there's quite a few classes that are starting to stack up really tight. Yeah, there sure are. But uh, Wyatt Hayes kind of riding a perfect race so far in Moto3 here. Down that jet trim back straightaway looking smooth. He's got nice water. Uh, and once, you know, once his leaders have nice water, before they get up on lap traffic, they have a pretty good go of it for a while. Well, battle going in the back of the pack with uh, Patrick Steer and Nikki Turner going at it. Here, just goes. And no, it's not. Check, check. And now it is. Wyatt Hayes, our race leader, down the front straightaway one more time, 425 with the lead. And here comes Jeb Zarzauer in 702, stretching it out. Down the front straightaway, he's got it, the leader in his sights now. Uh, with a few laps left to go, he's still got time to catch Wyatt Hayes. Here's the difference, right? 17 years old, 34 years old, twice the, his age. Yeah, I, That's uh, why he's stretching it out. God, 17 to 34 is twice the age. What's that make us? Older than that. <laughs> More experienced. Better looking. I agree. <laughs> Hey, started to wake never, it up. I never agreed with you more. <laughs> oh, Rick Lake, we are having some fun here. I hope you're enjoying the race on the uh, on the live stream as we're watching Wyatt Hayes. Hayes tearing up that inside, 17 years old. He got the whole shot, hasn't looked back. And, of course, we start talking about him. He dips a shoulder there. You know, Second Hayes, position, Zarzar, Hay right there. Hayes using a, a Jet Dynamics ride plate on that ski. That's a that's a company that's been around a long time. All they make are ride plates, and uh, it's interesting that Glenn they're, Dilworth. Glenn Dilworth, uh, good buddy. Yep, worked with him for many 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 years, and out of Idaho up there, and he's kind of a jet boat master in both boats and uh, personal watercraft, and he has created uh, some great ride plates for many years. And Wyatt Hayes putting it to good use right here, to, right now, today, out in front. Well, you know the Super inventor jet. of the scoop grate, right? Glenn Delworth. Amazing. That guy has so much experience with jet pumps. Yep. That's his, uh, really his area of expertise. No question about it. He likes to work with that non-compressible water. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> he sure does. All right, and, and the nicest guy. Oh I yeah, mean, seriously, the real, guy. real kind of quiet. He and his wife Kathy. I'm telling you, IGSB Hall of Fame member. Yeah, well deserved. Yeah, he is. Um, oh, out in Hayes. Front. Hayes, here comes Zarzauer. Zarzauer, Zarzauer making a charge now as we head into the last laps of this Moto Number Three. It's Zarzauer. You know, Hayes is in a good position for the overall. He can still finish in second to Zarzauer and take the win. Zarzauer will have a pair of wins if he can get by Hayes, but that, what I say, that, that ninth, ninth spot, yeah. that's, that's, that's just killing him right now. Uh, but he's going to charge nonetheless. He'd love to have a pair of wins here to finish off the weekend in uh, Lake Hartwell. Rick, look at the body position difference. The younger man out front, straight going, older man behind, stretching his back out, kind of leaning on the handle pull. 
late motos, yep. late in the motos, that's what makes the difference. Oh, you start feeling it. There's no question about it. He is charged. Oh, oh Zarza, we're going yep. to the outside. Here we go. Let's see what happens. They're going to go different splits. Hayes looks over and realizes that he's not leading him on the inside. What's going to happen with Hayes? Here, Here comes, comes Zarzauer. There's Hayes takes white flag. the white flag. One left to go. Where's Zarzauer? Zarzauer right loses a little bit of ground in left that right split. in front of him. Couple left riders in front of Wyatt Hayes. That may give Zarzauer the opportunity to move up. Let's watch it. Well, we thought Zarzauer was going to make the pass perhaps with that split, but he actually lost a few boat lengths in the split. So I'm not sure what happened back there. We couldn't see that far right-hand oh, corner. Oh, Zarzauer making all the right moves. Staying out of the pump wash. Moving up on Wyatt Hayes. Night, they, makes a nice move to get around lap traffic right there. Jeb Zarzauer, but Hayes has a comfortable lead right now down that back straightaway, the final time for these guys here today in Lake Hartwell. And if Hay or Har or, uh, Hayes can make no mistakes. Wyatt it, Hayes on the 425, on the 703 of Zarzauer. Zarzauer yep. going to go the outside. He has no it, choice. But he's Hayes. got a lapped rider in front of him. He's going to go right around him. No problem. Hayes is going to have to make some clean moves here. Nice turns by Hayes. One more to go. One more right-hander. Checkered flight comes out, Kurt. And Wyatt Hayes with the wire-to-wire -wire oh. win right behind him, Jeb Zarzauer. <laughs> They're both giving each other the thumbs up. Those yes, two. Yes, I said the thumbs up. Those two went after it. Boy, and they've battled all year long. Great riders. Thank you for that. What a joy. Rick Lake, wow. Yeah, good racing here in Harwell, Georgia, huh? Round number four of the 2018 Pro Watercross National Tour. It's presented by Broward Motorsports, and it has been a phenomenal weekend of racing here in Harwell. I'll tell you what, I cannot thank uh, the, the sponsors here at Lake Hartwell. Um, Christine, the executive director, thank you so much. We appreciate the, all the help that you guys have given us year after year. Really a joy to be here. Um, you remember, we've got uh, watercrafters. If you're in the area, you need something for your uh, watercraft, they're the one-stop shop. You want to go see them. Express Foods. Uh, behind us, they got Philly cheese, burgers, funnel cakes. They're doing uh, lunch for us again today. Allen Farms. Wow, the barbecue was excellent there yesterday. Oh, man. Those... Uh that pulled pork and those ribs oh. were outstanding. A and L shaved ice. They got the pretzels, the cotton candy, and uh, what else did they have out of there yesterday? They had uh, a chicken bowl that Maverick. Uh, well, had I followed great. Maverick's lead yesterday and yeah. grabbed a chicken, a Baja chicken bowl myself, and it was really good. I enjoyed that. I think I may look for that today. Blow it up inflatables. They got the water slide behind us and. That's uh, free from the chamber, so bring the kids out. They can ride that all day. Well, I did see you over there uh, knocking the kids out of the way to get a, get a couple runs down that slide. I was Kurt. trying to catch that little, uh, the, the small child that was tumbling from the you, top. You the were slide. dominating the water slide yesterday all day. Uh, only in the late afternoon. <laughs> Festiva giveaway, getaways right behind us. Go sign up over there. They're giving stuff away. They left. Okay. They gave everything away. Uh, they must have done it yesterday. They had a great time. They were stacked and packed back there. Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. on the line, and run about 800 uh, super stock. The Keith Walker out of Birmingham, Birmingham on the 205. And as he takes off, Jody Stembridge trying won't, to get that thing started. Won't start down there, that C-800 XP. This is a, essentially a vintage runabout class, right? 
essentially. It really is. Well, it's a super stock class. On 1990s C to 800s, right? Yeah. 95. Yep. 96. In that maybe, ballpark. I think yep. Yeah. One of the most popular watercraft ever sold. The Keith C2. Walker. And saying, should I keep racing? Because, gosh, he didn't get a start. What a nice guy, Keith Walker. Yeah, is. he was going to stop for his competitor. Oh. Okay. Awesome. oh. All right. Festiva is indeed in the house. Oh. Hey. Oh, what? Is re oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they repositioned. Hi. Hi. Got a little shade under those beautiful. What kind of trees are those, Kurt? Uh, Your microphone is missing, but they are Lake Hartwell type of trees. That's correct. What if I, we got a, a short in this thing? Every time I hit it, it seems to come back. Well, you're not that, short. We well, know that. Well, that's <laughs> Sir, I don't. All the time. Well said. Just like that. You sound good. <laughs> I'm impressed. Oh, man. Run right about 800. Super stock. Well, we got one rider on the course right now, Kurt. Keith Walker completely dominant in this race. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb and say Keith's going to dominate this thing. Well, he's got him. He's got him. Wire a, to wire. He's got a lap in there. Wire to wire. Is this a 15-lap moto, Scott? Australian Pursuit. Wait. Our course marshal is challenging our racer. And the course marshal's got a slightly faster ski, I think. I think so. <laughs> How many? Up next, Junior Ski Stock. In, this is going to be fun. In fact, you can see the, the uh, old school Sea Dew that the uh, racer is on the, uh, the 800, the XP 800. And uh, our course marshals are on a, you know, a modern runabout. It's a good, good comparison in size, both Sea Dews. And this is uh, the difference in about, what, 20 years? Wow, what a difference 20 years makes. Oh, man, really? And having said that, those little uh, X4 Hulk Sea Dews were revolutionary. And when they, they came were big out. back then. You, you, I mean, physically, you, though, those were like big when they came out. It was like, what? Terrified the skis on uh, oh that were out there. When I was on, I was on a race course, on a buoy course, riding on a 550. When this guy named Dave Newman from Rec World in Las Vegas, they started selling sea dews, and he came out on the course with us, and I was like, what is this? First time I'd ever seen one. It's like, no, dude, you you can't be out here with us right now. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get off the buoys. I don't like you. <laughs> well, he was scary. He wasn't just well, not only faster. The, the faster part it was easy. I just didn't want him to hit me. I didn't want to get in his way, put it that way. Yeah. And checkered flag comes out. Checkered flag comes out for Keith Walker. Keith yeah. takes the win overall today. Three first for Keith Walker. Unfortunately, Jody Stembridge, who not able to make moto number three, had a problem on the line. And two um, seconds. He's gonna he's gonna come right in there for second position he is gonna get second overall for the weekend no question about it kurt up next junior ski stock 10 12 and 13 15 in the 10 12 out of cooper city florida on that number 13 kawasaki sponsored by broward motorsports judge motorsports exotic signs showy jet pilot Wamilton's jet lift and jet trim sammy Nemi. and making his racing debut right here in hartwell georgia Boat number 59 out of Denver, North Carolina, sponsored by Mom and Dad and Champion Power Sports, Caden Baldwin, the son of Champion Brian Baldwin, and this is Caden's first ever 
race. Well, you know what? There's one other person that had something to do with that. That's his mom, Miranda. Miranda letting us know that uh, this is Caden's first race. And uh, what's that? And I'll tell you, Caden, yesterday, it was an awesome ride for oh, a young it, rider. It, it was fun old. watching him out there. Oh, I'll tell you what. He and Sammy Nimi, and Sammy had a great time. I'll tell you what, what great sportsmanship. Nimi, yeah. given, given uh, the lines to Caden, moving over, letting him try it, then moving back in front and showing him the lines again. Yeah, Absolutely. this is Sammy, a very, very experienced, probably one of the most experienced 13-year-olds in the world at racing, and we saw him just win that sports stock class earlier, beating a lot of great riders. And uh, Caden's first race, so uh, Sammy kind of showing him the ropes a little bit out there while Caden gets a taste of pro watercross racing here in Lake Hartwell. Of course, as mentioned, Caden is the son of national champion Brian Baldwin. And Sammy Nimi, the son of national champion Sam Nimi. <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah. Wow. So Devin Farthing was holding, it looked like, for uh, Caden down there, right? Yeah, he was. <laughs> Sam Nimi giving Devin a fist bump. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the hole. Look at this. Devin flexing the muscles. Miranda Baldwin's son out there leading this race right now. <laughs> Is that proper? And once again, look at Caden down the front straightaway, 10 years old on that Kawasaki, number 59. Sammy Nimi keeping an eye on him right behind him there on his number 13. I'll tell and of you course, what. Sammy is a real, real fast 13-year-old. And, you know, uh, what can you say? He's one of the top young riders in the sport today. And, hey, uh, I am completely fun. impressed with Caden Baldwin and his body positioning. He's 10 years old, okay? He's got one of the top riders on the tour right behind him who's obviously mentoring him yeah, uh, on the exactly. course. But look at the riding position of Caden Baldwin. He's right where he should be. He's centered on the craft. And figure he's got all 40 pounds of him to change the attitude Exactly. Of that no, and that's, a, that's just a real uh, pro watercross family, the Baldwins. You know, we saw Brian. You know, obviously he's one of the dominant riders in uh, runabout. But this, this weekend he's on a stand-up. And... <laughs> Given, given some very, very fast pro riders all they can handle. So, What is Brian Baldwin trying to tell us right now? Uh, that's not nice. Oh, he's just focused on his son. They're having a good time down there as Caden makes his laps. I think everybody around the race course is having a good time watching this race. We've Caden always at brian's side at the races yeah. you know yeah, yeah, always yeah. at brian's side with him through everything and uh, it's a great family uh to watch be involved in this sport they are so into it they eat live and breathe uh pro watercross and uh and you know what this this caden he's got some abilities and he's got you can tell he has got a lot of riding under his belt already at 10 years old. Yeah, no question. If you if you grow up in the Baldwin family, you better ride a watercraft. That's all I'm saying. All right. Somebody out there got a Yoke Yorkshire Terrier. Because it's not where you thought it was. It's down here underneath the uh, blue dog tent. You want to come down and uh, pick up your dog? Is that your dog? Down below here? Oh, I think we've uh, established ownership, perhaps. And connected the uh, Yorkie with uh, his owner. Okay. All, All right. good. Good to that see. Keeps us from having to post it on Craigslist. That's a, that's a. <laughs> we're that's a, that's a good sign. It's a match. Down All the right, back straight. Look, look at how Sammy is just monitoring him. I know. It's pretty darn cool to watch, actually. Well, I like the fact they'll pull up close to him enough to get in his peripheral, 
which gives him a sense of racing. Uh, He's racing. Yeah, pressure without being so close that if there's an issue. Oh, and Caden goes to the outside. Sammy takes the inside split. How fun is this? It is really a lot of fun. You know, up next, Junior Spark, stock 13 to 15. Sammy comes around the inside, looks over. Uh oh! Uh -oh. Looks like Caden had an issue. We can't see here. Well, Brian, but, Brian puts yeah. his hands on his head. Come on, Caden. Is he all right? Looks like he may have come off the ski. Oh uh, yeah. Well, that happens. That happens. A lot of right. We have a lot of uh, new riders here. Uh, first time riders here this weekend. Um, here in Hartwell, we've got a. Had a whole crew of uh, vintage riders. Oh, the great class. You know, uh, Caden making his debut. It's good to see Devin Farthing back. And the Miami Jet Ski Shop team has come up from Miami to compete here in Lake Hartwell. We welcome them. It's good to see them here. Welcome them into the Pro Water Cross Tour. So, uh, yeah, Jet Ski, they brought. Um... So that's kind of cool. Yeah, three riders with yeah, them. Love That's seeing, a, seeing a, a, and they have a nice, nice presence. A good team out of Miami. So, um, yeah, great to see them here in Lake Hartwell, and we hope to see them again next weekend in um, Charleston, West Virginia, for the national championships. Sammy Nimi coming around. It looks like he's going to go over and give Caden uh, a, a, a help up on the boat. We can't really see on this far side. Through the trees in this uh, on the outside here. Yeah, we got a little little blockage from a beautiful pine tree in front of us, which we won't touch till next year. Till next year. <laughs> and here comes Caden taking the white flag. He's back up and underway. One lap to go. Sammy moving over, Sammy Caden lead. Keeping an eye on his uh, younger friend. Gotta love that. Look at this. Devin Farthing down here with Brian Baldwin. They're laughing. Sam Nemi. If this is, if there is a one class that's a feel good class, this is it. Junior yeah. ski stock, 10 to 12. Yeah, and, and this gives us, you, you really see, um, you get a really good sense of the camaraderie that takes place on the Pro Water Cross Tour. You got Sam Nemi down there, um, whose son's out there, Brian Baldwin, whose son's out there. They're two of the top riders in the in the sport, and their sons are out here competing, and uh, it's a, it just feels real good, and it's a lot of fun for everybody. These are, these are gnarly competitors, make no mistake, but um, they're gentlemen more than that, and off the track, they are just wonderful individuals. Final time through the splits, Caden attacking the inside. Sammy's on the outside. It's got to be close as they pull through. Oh, Caden takes the win. Looks over and gives Sammy a thumbs up. That's <laughs> outstanding. All right. And kudos to Sammy Nemi. Oh, yeah. Well, Sammy was also a lap ahead, but well, we're just yeah, going to throw we it out there. We're not. Who's counting? No, we're not counting. In this class, we really aren't. Yeah. Great job, guys. That's fun to watch. All right. Somebody give those racers a hug. <laughs> we go back down to the starting line. The race number 12, Junior Spark Stock, 13 to 15. We've got two riders, two young ladies who are here for the first time competing. McLaren Gammon out of Gainesville and Madison Prez out of Claremont, Florida, both on Sea-Doo Sparks. And this is their first time racing here. Both young ladies. Um, McLaren is 14. Madison is 15. And uh, really fun to see as some new riders come out here and uh, enter competition for the first time. Well, I'll tell you what. Madison Perez finished in front both of the two prior motos. She's out front right now. But <laughs> McLaren is right there now. And you can tell that I'm going to say there's a little bit more experience for Madison uh, over McLaren. But, boy, I'll tell you what, that junior spark stock class, love to see that expand. The affordable, number one selling uh, personal watercraft, yep. the Sea-Doo Spark. 
Well, like we were talking about, you know, the, they are number one selling watercraft for the last few years. See, to introduce the Spark, it's an entry-level ski. They come in at around, oh, just a little over $5,000. Um, you can get a brand-new watercraft and get out here and compete in pro watercross. And, you know, also just enjoy being a watercraft rider. Um, and, you know, I expect to see this class grow in the coming years with the number of people that are purchasing these sparks i would think this would become a very very popular class as we uh, move forward yeah no question about it they're affordable and uh, a lot of fun to ride <laughs> as we watch madison perez her helmet's bouncing off the handlebars down she might want to move back just a little yeah there <laughs> yeah 21 mclaren gam and she's right up right up on the front of that spark and uh, interesting, I mean, they're, this is their first time. Right. First time out here. This, you, Everybody watching, whether you're here today in Lake Hartwell or following the competition on live stream, um, you know, the, you, this is something that you can be part of. For $5,000, you can go out and get a, a Sea-Doo Spark, or you can buy any watercraft you want. We don't care. We just want you to come and join us here on the Pro Watercross Tour and uh Get out here and ride the buoys and have a good time racing. Why not? That's less than one dinner in New York City. Up next, Novice Sports Stock should be on the line. Benjamin Borger, Austin Smith, Sam Dyer, you should be on the line right now. Race number 13. Across the line, Madison Perez continuing to lead out of Claremont, uh, Florida. She's starting to stretch that lead out. Over McLaren. Uh, well, you Garmin. think about that. You can get one of these machines brand new for in the $5,000 range. Um, and you can ride to your heart's content all day long. You can compete, have a good time. Uh, it's a, that's a pretty, you know, um, small investment for the amount of fun that you can have on the water, Kurt. You know, honestly, Rick Lake, I'm thinking with your credit score and your credit cards, we could buy like six of them. We might be able to get half of one. Come, let me try that card. <laughs> let me borrow that. I'll be back in about a half hour. And then you and I will be out there. Then it all, then it <laughs> uh, all goes bad. Oh yeah, the that's when it all right, goes bad right, right there. Me and you on sparks. Never a good idea. Couple of six foot plus guys on oh, sparks. Yeah. White flag out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People are already headed, moving back from the beach for that race. Yeah, Madison Perez. Half a lap to go, and that'll be uh, the trifecta. Three uh, number one position finishes. McLaren Garmin out of Gainesville, Georgia. That, uh, she'll triple up on the second place position. And with any luck, we'll see him in uh, Charleston, West I Virginia. I hope so. I hope they continue their racing career. National points leaders. Junior Spark Stock, 13 to 15. We've got a class for virtually everybody out here from 10-year-old uh, Caden Baldwin to 60-year-old uh, Jeff Dykowski and, and uh, everybody in between, man. It's pretty darn cool here on the Pro Watercross Tour. 7.53 comes across. Madison Perez, congratulations with a great ride. Your first time racing. Again, three first place finishes for Madison. Good to see you out here. Yeah, coming up now, McLaren Garman. She'll finish second. Uh, this is her third second place finish. And uh, if these two head to Charleston, West Virginia, we'll see them compete again for double points next time. Anything can happen. On the line, Nava Sports Stock. On the number 82 machine out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Benjamin Borger. Number 121 out of Gainesville, Georgia. On the Kawasaki, Austin Smith. On the 331 Yamaha out of Jacksonville, Florida, Sam Tyre. So we have a sea to a Kawasaki and a Yamaha. Could it be more fair? Absolutely perfect. Why, thank you. Yamaha Wave Blaster, a sea to HX. And an X2?
No show yet. Where oh where is Austin Smith? Interestingly enough, Austin got a pair of fifths yesterday. We found out Austin raced in vintage yesterday on the X2, so that explains that. So we got the, oh, uh, oh the c dupe HX getting the big jump out of the gate. Benjamin Borger with a pair of seconds yesterday. Ironically, Sam Tyre dominated on his blaster, but now Tyre in second behind Borger. He's going to have to try and make a move to get by. Um, and at this point... At this point, uh, he's got the win. So Sam Tyre, if he makes one complete uh, circuit, will be the champion for the weekend. Up next, Vintage Ski. We got a lot of Vintage Ski riders coming up. Well, I tell you what, Benjamin Borger, he got the lead. He does not want to let go of it. Sam Tyre, though, out of Jacksonville, riding the wheels off of that uh, blaster. Look yeah. how tight. He's well. Tire was much faster yesterday in both motos, and uh, he is coming up real quickly behind Borger. Let's see if Borger can hold him off a little bit here. I doubt it, but you never know. They're battling. Look, it looks over down the back straightaway. Borger gets into a tuck on that HX, and actually that HX pulled the blaster just a little bit down that back straightaway, so perhaps Borger's got a little top end on the blaster, but uh, but Sam Tyre can really crank that blaster over in the turns. Here we go inside and outside. Tyre on the inside. Borger on the outside. Tyre coming up quick. Does Borger have the speed? No. Tyre going to take it over as he looks over. Oh, I think Tyre may be uh, having a little fun out I there. I think so, because he had plenty of room to move over and uh, he effectively he, block him. He actually waited up a little bit yeah. coming out of the split. He had taken over the lead on the split. So well, Vintage Ski coming up next. Oh, this look, is, at, look at the craft down Run the what you brung, Vintage Ski on the starting line. This is fun. Yeah, we got to give a shout-out to... Uh, the Heart Chamber of Commerce, uh, Watercrafts in uh, South Carolina. And, you know, for the Vintage Ski Run What You Brung coming up, Performance Excavating, Three Brothers Racing. They uh, threw some money out there. I think there's over $1,000 or, no, $500 total in this class. Uh, John Block Construction threw out 100 for a, a whole shot award, as did Championship Power Sports and Kemp Construction. So... Whole shot winner in each moto, each of the three motos gets 100 bucks. Pretty darn cool. Whoa. Borger getting a little wild there, Borger. riding riding the edge. Yeah, Borger and Tire putting the laps in out here, having some fun on those sport boats. One's the C2HX, obviously, and the other one is the Yamaha Wave Blaster. And uh, riders that own these sport boats, they just never get tired of riding them. They just absolutely love them. And we saw in both of our sport stock and sport GP classes, the turnouts are always huge. Yeah, when, you, when you've got three different hull styles to uh, compete in the class, that makes it a lot easier to fill up the line for sure. And honestly, it's, it's anybody's race. I will say an X2 hull's a little more difficult, but uh, we yeah, saw the Ortega, Danny yeah. and Lori Ortega there, you can't at Charleston happen. last year. White flag out, side, side by, by side. side, down the front straightaway. Oh, boys, you're sweeping. Oh, Sam Tyre decides to uh, show Borger a little bit of uh, high horsepower, laying it over racing right there. Yeah, Tyre kind of just... At will move forward. Yeah, there. he's he's definitely got the speed on Borger right now for sure. But those guys are having a good time out there. I can assure you. As uh, our vintage 
Riders are down in the line checking out their boats, making sure they're ready to go. They've got these uh, vintage skis prepped. And uh, we will soon smell the fine smell of two-stroke oil wafting through the air here in uh, beautiful Lake Hartwell. Chuck yes, the flag comes will. out, and Sam Tyre makes it three out of three for the weekend. Borger comes in second, and that will do it for Novice Sports Stock. Up next, Vintage Ski on the number zero machine out of Saudi Daisy, Tennessee, 23-year-old Killian Lewis. Boat number two out of Saudi Daisy as well. 22 years old on the Cowie, Jackson Alinkus. On the number five, Kawasaki out of Nashville, Tennessee, Hunter Holland. Number six out of Chattanooga on the Cowie, Dustin Higdon. On the number seven, Kawasaki, also out of Saudi Daisy, Tennessee, Cole Holland. Number 80 out of Cornelius, North Carolina, Nathan Kemp. On the number 86, Yamaha out of Dawsonville, Georgia, Rex Hayes. Number 94 out of West Harrison, Indiana, Josh Block. And from Harrison, Tennessee, Yamaha mounted Kevin Rowe on the number 95. Number 101 out of Chickamauga, Georgia, Will Scraggs. Out of Dallas, Georgia, on the 145, Kawasaki, Chris Watchtall. Number 315 out of Marietta, South Carolina, Taylor Stewart. Rounding out the field out of Clearwater, Florida, on the Sea-Doo, Gage Schoner on the 910. That is Vintage Ski, and I don't think we've got a Vintage Sea-Doo in, out there. Uh, there is not a Vintage Sea-Doo, but we have a bunch of Kawasaki 550s and a couple of, C, uh, couple of Kawasaki X2s. And oh, a smattering, looks like about four Yamaha square nose super jets. We got a riders meeting going on down beneath us. Yep. With the money on the line. So these guys have a little different course that they're riding. Well, once again, Allen Farms delivers an amazing looking funnel cake. So, if you want to have your mind blown with a funnel cake, head over to Allen Farms. Thank you very much. Wow.
Once again. Is that a single cylinder? Brick Lake, is that? Whoa, no Kevin mic. Rowe out of Harrison, Tennessee on that second on that second wave. Check, check, check. Oh, there we go, Dom. 94 Josh Block, man. He has just dominated this thing all weekend long. That is one fast 550. He's got a little, little leg drag it, out oh, there. Oh, that was a full body drag at, in the uh, right hand turn. To tossing out that leg, that right hand. <laughs> <laughs> Doing his Gotta best love it. Victor Sheldon impersonation. Let's see his ankles. Oh. No, his ankles are twice the size of Victor's. These guys, <laughs> these guys are going out in the full course today, I guess. It looks oh, yeah. like. Jackson Lincus in second. The number seven, Cole Holland out of Saudi Daisy. And there are onboard camera on the 95, Kevin Rowe out of Harrison, Tennessee. This is going to be a marathon on this full course out here. Down the back straightaway, Josh Block. I on got that one five. word for you. Repeated. Bye bye. Five. Yeah, he's he's gone. He's got a way superior ski out there, and he's a, he can ride it as well. As he comes around at the end of that back straightaway, Richard Ignacio trying to give us live streaming on board on these craft, trying to get it dialed before the national championships. Next weekend for the online, uh, stick with us as he is trying to dial that in for the rest of the motos uh, today. It's going to be exciting. Man, what innovations from uh, live streaming 247.com, Richard Ignacio? Always working on bringing up, bringing us some different views of the racing action out here Moving on the water. Forward. Josh Moving Block forward. looking good out in front. Looks like number two in second place. That's uh, Jackson Linkus out of Saudi Daisy, Tennessee. 95 in third yeah, place. Yeah, Rowe just went from Kevin fourth to Rowe. third. And so, he is our onboard camera rider there in third position. We ought to have some great shots coming up. We're trying Maverick going to split screen so you can see something uh, other than to look at that shot coming up from Rowe. Rowe trying to make a pass, and he does. Rowe up into second position. Kevin Rowe with the onboard camera making the move. Got a rider down in the back straightaway out there on the far outside. Looks like they're up and running. But uh, meanwhile, Josh Block on that uh, Kawasaki 550 that runs very, very strong. Definitely the fastest ski out here. Yeah, no doubt about it. And he can ride it, so that's a nice combination. Yes, it is. Boy, Maverick, Richard Ignacio going for the great visuals as our leader comes by, Josh Block. Maverick throwing down some HD quality action. And look at this. Even though Block is out in front, Kevin Rowe, fastest rider on the course now. He went well, from fourth to second. Well... Yes, but Kevin Rowe is on a uh, Yamaha Superjet, so a little, little difference there. In uh, no, not a little difference, a huge difference in. Uh, and he's starting. Ch he's chasing down Josh Block. Yeah, he should catch him. Whatever it is, now Block. Now Block has been spectacular. Block's I'm not ready to fast. say that he's going to pass Josh Block, but he might catch him. Yeah, well, that, that uh, Yamaha Superjet is definitely a superior platform and uh, much easier to ride in rel relativity to the, uh, to the 550, no question about it. Well, let's see what happens. Block goes to the inside. Uh, Rowe goes to the outside. Rowe getting right by the left rider. I thought that might hang him up for a little bit more, but it didn't. Rowe going to try and make a move here. Here comes Josh Block. Wide open off the straight, and here comes Kevin Rowe. Oh, so Rowe's going to tuck in behind Block momentarily here. Position himself to uh, make the pass on Block. Let's now, see how that onboard camera gets that pass if he can. Right there, it's going side by side. 
and Rowe demands first position and pushes Josh Buck up to the outside as he makes the move. Yeah, he just kind of goes around him on the outside, then back around on the inside, and, you know, not too difficult, really, uh, with that uh, Super Jet versus the 550 hole. Just two different platforms completely from two different eras, and, uh, and you can see the difference right there. Much easier to ride that Super Jet than the uh, 550, and as fast as Block is on that 550, just no match. Well, thanks for taking the drama out of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, you know, no, they, I, no, it is what it is. absolutely correct, Rick. There's no question. Block, the fastest 550 out there by far. But, boy, to keep up with that super jet, just not happening. No. No, no replacement for displacement. Oh, uh, or White even flag. more even more so hull, hull development. Right. And uh, a super jet just hooks up so much better than the uh, 550 pumps do. Call it the point and shoot. Speaking of which, after this, Women's Ski Limited, Ski Superstock coming up. This is the final lap. Kevin Rowe out in front, Josh Block in second. Look at the battle going on back here. Couple square no super jets getting after it. Scraggs and Shoner side by side through the whole course. They're battling. On the final lap. Her just made the pass and he has taken off. All right, final few boys. Kevin Rowe taking the outside split. Here he comes. Folks, give him some applause. Vintage Ski, Moto 2 winner. Out of Harrison, Tennessee, Kevin Rowe. Moto 3 winner, but uh, Kevin Rowe, nonetheless, 95. Oh, well. Oh, what a good time watching these vintage boats out on the water. You know what? Let's just run through it. I got to just say Hunter Holland, Dustin Higdon, Cole Holland, Nathan Camp, <coughs> Rex Hayes, Will Scraggs, Chris Wajtal, Taylor Stewart, Gage Schoner, everybody in that class. Thanks for coming out. Vintage Ski, that was a lot of fun to watch. Up next, Women's Ski Limited. Great to see all the women on the line on the number seven machine out of Woodstock, Georgia. Got a pair of seconds headed into third moto. Megan O'Donnell out of Apex, North Carolina on that number 300 Kawasaki. Carrie Oliver. Carrie sponsored by Hurricane Racing, Imagination Fabrication, Amsoil, Tapped Out Cycles, and Turner Catering. Want to uh, let you know that O'Donnell sponsored by ADB, Lair Performance, Watercraft. On the 411 out of Rolling Meadows, Illinois, Kawasaki mounted Jessica Wybasek. She had a birthday here yesterday. She's sponsored by Twangled, Hydro Turf, Havoc, Brap, Freestyle Factory, KBeautyVIP.com, and Born to Flip. Rounding out the limited field on the 712 Kawasaki out of Cornelius, North, Car North Carolina. Let's hear it for Nikki Turner. There we go. Nikki, sponsored by Hurricane Racing, Amsoil 321 Kawasaki, and SBI Wear. And the Ski Superstar Class on the number 300 out of Miami, Florida. Sponsored by M Miami Jet Ski Stop, 25 Creative, Blosion, and the Miami Sound Machine, Leonardo Villa. All, All right. right. Yeehaw. Race number 15. This is our final. Moto number three. Right. No. no. We got a few more in we the uh, novice have, class before we go to the pro yet, show. That's all.
All right, here we go. Women's Ski Limited and Ski Superstock combined. Looks like number seven, Megan O'Donnell out of Woodstock, Georgia with the race lead. Oh, Jessica Wybasek on the outside. She may take it, actually. Oh, Jessica man, flying she is on, on the outside. Fire. Yeah, she's really going after it here. And I here say she she's going to oh, take she's going to have it easily. Yep. Here comes Wybasek on that 4-1-1. Wybis Birthday celebration yesterday. I wonder how she's going to feel later in the moto. Wybasek, 36 years old, out of Rolling Meadows, Illinois, riding for Twangled, HydroTurf, Havoc, Brap Freestyle Factory. And uh, she is putting in a real good weekend of racing. I want to make that a little more impressive for you. She's 37 now. There you she's go. She's in her 38th year on the planet. <laughs> Compare that with uh, the 16-year-old Leonardo Villa. Leonardo Villa, another one of the riders out of that Miami jet ski shop coming up to uh, Hartwell, Georgia this weekend and the, joining the Pro Water Cross Tour. Great to see them. Absolutely. Look forward to, uh, with any luck, seeing them in Charleston, West Virginia oh, next we weekend. Oh, we hope so. Yep. Yeah. All right. Where are we at with Wybasek on the outside one more time? There we go. Jessica Wybasek, way, way, way out in front. Here's the battle for second. Megan O'Donnell out in front of Nikki Turner. Turner in that third position. And there's the 300, Leonardo Villa. Separate class, of course, ski super stock. Or is that 300, Leonardo Villa and super stock? Carrie Oliver. Well, Wybasek really running away out in front down at the end of that back straightaway. Jessica Wybasek looking so fast all weekend long. Although, having said that, she got a fourth place in moto number one. She's in first place, had a first in moto two, and a looking like a a solid first in moto number three. Not sure what happened back in moto number one, but. Um, yeah, isn't that crazy? So O'Donnell sure. and Wybasek would be tied on points. Wybasek yeah. would get the, the overall by uh, superior finish in the third and most important moto. That's correct. And uh, she is really f flying out here this morning. Boat number seven in second place, Megan O'Donnell. Well, and I'll tell you what. Oh, I'm sorry, Rick. I, and I then 7-12, Nikki Turner in third. Yeah, Turner going to the inside. Almost made the move for second on that last lap. Well, let's watch them as they come back around. Down the back straightaway one more time. Our race leader in command, Wybasek. And she is just laying down some laps here this morning at Lake Hartwell flying out there looking over her shoulder and seeing where everybody's at here moto number three she definitely turned up the wick and oh, yeah. put she the hammer likes... down on these other women yeah she likes that outside split Ooh. down the front straightaway right by the flagging tower jessica wybasek with the race lead all by herself out in front, just running away here in moto number three. The halfway sign is out, but we have a tremendous battle for second right now between number seven, Megan O'Donnell, and 712. That's Nikki Turner, Turner out of Cornelius, North Carolina, and they are going at it tooth and nail for second overall. I'll t tell you what, Nikki taking some good lines, trying to jump the bump wash and make that move. But Megan O'Donnell's having none of it. <laughs> no, not at all. They are they are really getting after it here, having a great race here in Moto Number Three this morning. Carrie Oliver is looking stylish back there on the number three hundred, the white boat. 
Carey out of Apex, North Carolina, 32 years old, riding for Hurricane Racing and Imagination Fabrication. But right now, it has all been Jessica Wybasek. Four eleven, our race leader down the front straightaway one more time past the flagging tower. It is Jessica Wybasek with the race lead. And the battle for second rages now. It's a three-way battle for second. And let's see how they sort out coming off that split onto the front straightaway. It is number number seven, Megan O'Donnell, followed by number 712, Nikki Thanks. Turner. And uh, boat number 300 went down inside in that inside split, and she is down in the water right now. Yeah, Carrie Oliver trying to get that boat started. Not having much success quite yet. Women's Ski Limited out on the course, and it's all been Jessica Wybasek here, moto number three, as she comes by the front straightaway one more time with a commanding lead. And now 300 back up and underway. Carrie Oliver having some problems on that split. She's looking down, looks like something may be wrong. And the battle for second, look at this battle side by side wow. down the front straightaway. Number seven, Megan O'Donnell. Number seven, 12, Nikki Turner. Battling, out, battling it out here in Hartwell. Moto number three. These two riders are pretty evenly matched and having a real good race here for second place overall. But it's all been Jessica Wybasek, who is completely checked out and is on the other side of the race course right now. She's in another time zone, another zip code, Rick Lake. Yeah, she is checked out. And... Uh, <laughs> Put in a marvelous ride here. Jessica on that uh, 411 Kawasaki. Women's Ski Limited. White flag coming out for Wybasek. One lap to go. But we'll keep it, we'll keep an eye on that battle for second place. And it's number seven now, Megan O'Donnell, who has pulled out a lead, Nikki Turner, fall, falling back on that last lap. And one lap to go, looks like it's gonna be Megan O'Donnell who's gonna garner that second place finish over Turner, great battle from those two this morning. And we'll keep an eye on our our flagger out there, Storm and Norman Yee on the tower. And he's got the checkered flag in one hand, a white flag in the other. And uh, he's keeping an eye on our race leader. And here she comes, taking the checkered flag. 411. Jessica Wybasek with an outstanding ride here in moto number three, taking the win. And we'll keep an eye out for second place. It's good, I believe it's going to be number seven, Megan O'Donnell. Megan O'Donnell, 27 out of Woodstock, Georgia. Oh, it's Nikki Turner. Nikki Turner comes back strong on the final lap. Number seven, 12, Turner. Oh, and Megan O'Donnell can't believe it. She had a big lead over Turner going into that final lap. Made a mistake. And it was Turner that capitalized and garnered second overall here in the women's ski limited division.
We've got the uh, beginner runabout class on the starting line right now. We're going to wait for, oh, my goodness, our t television guru, Zach, the man, brings the uh, sheets up, and we're back in action. Okay, we're going to run beginner ski, beginner runabout stock right now. And we're going to stop the beginner racing and go right into our pro show, which is going to be Pro Am Ski Stock. Our first pro show moto of the day, Pro Am Ski Stock, will follow the class on the line right now. So, Pro Am Ski Stock riders, we need you to start getting ready. You're going to be up next. And we're going to run the final amateur races after Pro Moto number two. And then Pro Moto number three will be our final rounds of the day. So once again, we are going to run, begin to run about box stock right now. They are down in the line, and then we are going to go into the pro show. So again, that first pro show moto is going to be the uh, Pro-Am Ski Stock. Pro-Am Ski Stock riders, you should be getting your gear on and heading down to the starting line. On the line for beginner run about box stock, number 104, out of Rock Hill, South Carolina, Tommy Scoggins. Number 176 out of Miami, Florida, Valentina Lescano. Number 215 out of Carleton, Georgia, Seth Namup. Number 243 out of Loganville, Georgia, Jennifer Elling. And number 920 out of Ackworth, Brian Kruger. Here we go. Begin to run about box stock into the first turn. Oh, oh, goodness gracious. I'm not sure what is taking place on the race course right now, but nonetheless, 920, Brian Kruger with the lead, 215 in second, Seth Namup, 176 down the front straightaway, Valentina Lescano, and uh, we had a mix-up out there in the inside split with a rider doing a couple of pirouettes, and uh, <laughs> this is not runabout freestyle. So, uh, wow, that was kind of crazy, but uh, we're, we're all good. Put 920, the Brian Kruger out in front. Boy, Kruger's been out front a lot this weekend, hasn't he? Yeah, I got a pair of wins so far in this beginner runabout box stock class, and uh, he's leading this one again. Clearly the dominant rider here in runabout box, beginner runabout box stock. And once again, a quick announcement. Following the conclusion of this moto, we are going to begin the pro show. And with that, we will need the uh, Pro-Am Ski stock riders to the starting line. You should be heading down right now. Pro-Am Ski stock riders to the starting line. Yeah, Brian Kruger out of Ackworth, Georgia, 31 years old, riding for Mountain Motorsports and Mac Photography, has absolutely dominated uh, this beginner runabout box stock class, Kurt. Oh, man, Kruger. Oh, I'll tell you what. Seth Nama out of Carleton, Georgia, he has had an up-and-down weekend. He is always charging on that 215 uh, Yamaha. And he's the only non-supercharged boat out there. Yeah, and he is the only non-supercharged boat out there. And here so he says comes down the Rob front straightaway. Seth, Seth Narma. Nama. Seth Nama out of Carleton. Nama. Nama. Like your mama. Seth Nama. 
Mama is on the beach. Na Nama's mama is on the beach rooting him on. Oh, here we go. And Seth's on the gas here in moto number two in second place. But Brian Kruger bye -bye. is out there and charging in front as he has all weekend long, looking real good. And well, beginning to run Seth about box second? stock not, is yeah. the Yamaha class. Yeah, kind of, huh? <laughs> yeah, Yamaha, 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 Yamaha. If you got a Yamaha, this is the place to be on a box stock runabout. Well, we talked about uh, being 60-plus and running, and there it is. Tommy Scoggins out of Rock Hill, South Carolina, 64 years young. Exactly. I love it. Tommy out there charging, and uh, there is no limits from 10-year-old 10 10-year-old 10 Caden Baldwin to a 64-year-old Tommy Scoggins, man. It doesn't matter who you are or what your age is. There's a place for you in pro watercross racing. No question about it. 176 down the front straightaway. That's Valentina Lescano out of Miami on the Miami Jet Ski Shop team. She continues to impress. I'll tell you, for somebody who just showed up, she is a good, solid rider. She's put in good finishes in every class that she's competed. Yeah, this Miami Jet Ski Shop team showed up uh, this weekend here, first time on the Pro Watercross Tour, and a very impressive, impressive uh, debut here in Pro Watercross. Oh, checkered flag's coming out. Wow, Brian Kruger made quick work of this class. 176, Nama. No, 176 That's is Valentino. That's Lescano, Valentino Lescano. Yeah. But it was Brian Kruger. Boy, he made quick work of this uh, beginner runabout box stock class, Kurt. Yes, he did. 